We're off. Off the dock. We are leaving getting for the Upper Coast Dakota. We're uh We're yeah. leaving from McCotter's Marine. Yeah. Headed to Indian Island stage for the Upper Coast Dakota, which starts tomorrow morning. And we are <laughs> just like we're in we're in five three water. <laughs> so maybe we'll get stuck. You're not go anywhere. Who knows? Welcome back to Sailing Out of Sight. I'm Diane. This is Craig. And this is our pirate pup, Bonnie. Learning as we go, we invite you to follow along in our search for blue water. Follow our track out. The track we came in. Yep. I don't think the tide's any lower than what it was when we came in, but I don't know. Hey, Bonnie, what you doing? Huh? Got some. She's not happy because her air conditioner got turned off, but she's enjoying the breeze. Now, one thing is, we right now are in currently in the state of redoing the Dodger enclosure. Craig did get the Bimini top finished, so we don't have our windshield and side panels or anything. So, hopefully, it's not going to rain on us, but we do get a lot of breeze because we have nothing else on there. So. So anyway, we're going to figure out where we're going and make a day of it. Well, we are out in the Pamlico River, motoring right now because there's very little wind. We might try to put the sails up later just to test them since it's been a while since the sails have been up. But uh, we are going about five and a half knots. We got a new prop, which Greg will show you on a video our new folding prop. Uh, we got a new bottom job, so we are moving quite nicely with all of that. Bonnie's catching a little wind. We usually have her tethered in, and I will be tethering her in later. Um, right now, we're going slow enough, and the water's not choppy, so I'm okay with her walking around just up here where I am and back to the cockpit. But uh, anyway, we're out here on the Pamlico River, heading towards Indian Island. That's where we'll anchor for the night, and then we'll head off in the regatta tomorrow. They have this fat girl as one of the faster boats, so we will be starting later. Um, I, unless everybody else is just a lot fatter and slower than we are, we're kind of in the wrong time slot. But it doesn't matter. Um, I don't care if we win or lose. I just want to get the sails up and see how they work. But of course, Craig's like, well, I just don't want to come in last. Gene, if you ain't first, you're last. You know what I'm talking about? I don't care. <laughs> so that's the difference between him and me. I just like to smooth sail. So anyway, okay, time to get the deck cleaned up and get the bumpers pulled in and get this place ship shape for us moving on. Well, we're out on the Pimlico and my thoughts are, it feels really good to be moving again. This is the first time out on the boat in, I don't know, since September, eight, nine months. Feels good, feels real good. Well, it gives you something. We're debating arm length. If I do it, you're looking at us like this. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing now? We are motoring <laughs> on ourselves. Oh, what Because oh. the wind angle is 10 degrees. And it's already 3.30. Yeah. What was the finger for? I was going to say, we could have the sails up and tack, 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 tack. 
but we have what three more hours to get to where we're right. at, anchored. At, least, at least a couple more hours to anchorage and in a straight line we've never been there before so we don't want to go anchor after dark so motoring it is so <laughs> So tomorrow during the regatta will be the first time we've had the sails up. <laughs> we still might be motoring with the sails up. Yep, that's <laughs> us. We've already talked to several of the people around us. They they think the way the wind is, they said they think they're just going to motor to Oak Creek Oak. They're not even going to mess with it because it's supposed to be very light winds and like five, five mile an hour winds. These are great winds. They're just the wrong angle. It's yeah. like right on the nose. Yeah, the winds are what true wind speed. It's thir thirteen mile an hour wind, so it would be perfect sailing. But it's yeah, three degrees, two degrees. So. Anyway, so such is our life. But at least we're not on the ICW. We are on the Pamlico River. Yeah. Yep. So. Yay! So it is what it is today. It looks like it's motoring to the anchorage. Right. And maybe everything will be great for a sail tomorrow. You know, you really can't. I, we, we, this is the first time we've been out in how many months? And it, it's not the what we need, so we're complaining. That makes much sense. Yeah. We don't have a right to complain yet. So this could be an omen for things to come tomorrow. <laughs> we have five knots of wind. It's coming at 45 degrees, and we're going 0.88 knots. <laughs> yep. And that's what the wind is supposed to be tomorrow. Of course, we only have the headsail. I mean, not the headsail. We have the mainsail up, but uh, I don't know that the headsail will help us that much. Anyway, it'll be a slow go tomorrow. here pretty quick so I'll just show you a little bit it's looking into the Sun so I don't know if you can see it <laughs> looks like it might be a pretty nice place to anchor for the night so uh, hopefully fingers crossed Yes. Okay. Twelve feet. What day is it? Race day. Race day? Race day. <laughs> is this fat old girl going to move? She'll move. Okay. We may be the turtle in the crew. Yep. We still got a ways to get before we get to the starting line. We didn't get our anchor up as soon as we wanted to, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah. We got to get back up river. We got to get above the starting line before our start time of 8.57. Okay. So that's why we're motoring right now. Yes, we're headed to the start line. Okay. So, wish us luck. Okay, 
That's the stuff. We're going the wrong direction. So we're going to walk here right our trail. Located between Hatteras and Portsmouth Islands, Ocracoke is a 16 mile long island ranging from one half to two miles wide. Like most other islands of the Outer Banks, early Ocracoke was largely inaccessible and conditions were difficult. However, Ocracoke Inlet was of such importance to commerce that in 1715, North Carolina's Colonial Assembly stationed pilots at Ocracoke to guide ships through the inlet. By the early 1800s, Ocracoke Inlet gained importance as the only navigable inlet in this section of the Outer Banks. Ocracoke Inlet provided access to the ports of New Bern, Eddington, and Elizabeth City. Over 60% of North Carolina's exports would pass through the Ocracoke Inlet. Yeah, a little over halfway. So, this is my point of view. We started out with gangbusters, but we had real good wind. We were gaining on people, fixing to overtake a boat, and then the wind died. So, now we're just on a leisurely sail, and this fat old girl, not me, but the boat, is moving along nicely. Nice and smooth. What she's trying to say is this boat is no, mansplaining now. It's it's not a race boat. It's a little bit underpowered, so what that means is it sails better in stronger winds than it does in uh, lighter winds. That's just what it is. It's what we've got and we're very happy with it. We're just not winning any races. <laughs> Getting wild here at the finish. We got 20 knots of wind. Uh, I don't know what the seeds are, but we're thinking water over the bow occasionally. So I'm a little bit damp. Um, biggest thing was we're headed in. We are on a what tack. It doesn't matter what tack we're on. Anyway, the ferry um, evidently, even though they are a motorboat, they do not feel to sailboats or alter course to sailboats. So we had to make some emergency maneuvers, um, which was not fun. It was real quick and chaotic, but we got it done. So uh, anyway, we're getting close to the finish line. We gotta watch for a buoy. And in these choppy seas, I don't know how easy it'll be to see it, but we'll start watching for it. Was fun. But we're down to 
going to fax our way into the Fort Peter and relax the beach. Ocracoke's history includes some interesting highlights, but none are as popular as the island's local pirates. It was a temporary home to crews of notorious buccaneers, including Blackbeard himself. While the Caribbean originated as one of the most common destinations for pirates, as trade increased along the northern New World coastline, the pirates effectively migrated. Edward Teach was an English pirate who operated around the West Indies and the eastern coast of Britain's North American colonies. Little is known about his early life, but Teach soon became the renowned pirate known as Blackbeard. His nickname derived from his thick black beard and fearsome appearance. He was reported to have tied lit fuses under his hat to frighten his enemies. Most of the stories or histories we hear covers his heyday of piracy. But what about the story of his demise? Just outside the entrance to Silver Lake where we are anchored is Teach's Hole where it all took place. In June 1718, Blackbeard sailed through Ocracoke Inlet and supposedly attempted to retire by settling down in Bath, North Carolina, where he accepted a royal pardon. By the end of August, Teach had returned to piracy and a warrant for his arrest was issued. Ocracoke Inlet is a favorite anchorage of Teach. It offered a perfect vantage point from which to view ships traveling between the various settlements of the Northeast Carolinas. In November 1718, Teach and the pirate Charles Vane spent several nights on the southern tip of Ocracoke Island, accompanied by other notorious figures like Israel Hands, Robert Deal, and Calico Jack Rackham. November 22, 1718, Lieutenant Robert Maynard of the British Royal Navy on the HMS Pearl attacked and a ferocious battle ensued. Blackbeard and several of his crew were killed by a small force of sailors. Teach's body was examined, noting that he had been shot five times and cut about 20. Teach's corpse was thrown into the inlet and his head was suspended from the bowsprit of Maynard Sloop so that the reward of almost $100,000 in 2024 could be collected. On the return to Virginia, Teach's head was placed on a pole at the entrance to the Chesapeake Bay as a warning to other pirates and a greeting to other ships, and it stood there for several years. Despite his infamy, Teach was not the most successful of pirates, yet he still plays a role in the culture in some of the areas of North Carolina. Various superstitious tales exist of Teach's ghost. Unexplained lights at sea are often referred to as Teach's light. Some recitals claim that the notorious pirate now roams the afterlife searching for his head for fear that his friends and the devil would not recognize him. Bike riding is one of the most efficient ways to get around on Ocracoke Island. The roads can get a bit crowded and some of the sites have limited or no parking available. Bike rentals are plentiful if you can't bring your own. Standing 75 feet tall, Ocracoke Lighthouse has stood for two centuries. Construction of the lighthouse was completed in 1823. 
The walls are solid brick, five feet thick at the bottom, tapering to two feet at the top. Its diameter narrows from 25 feet at the base to 12 feet at its peak. Thank you for coming along with us. We hope you enjoyed our video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share us with a friend. See you later. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and ring the little bell. Bottoms up. Thanks for watching. <laughs>